Hello and good afternoon from Bristol's stunning Temple Mead station. Today we'll be heading from here down to Penzance in Cornwall with Great Western Railway. But before we set off, I think we'd better check out this masterpiece of a station. The main entrance brings you into this lovely foyer area. Here you'll find a few staff ticket counters as well as a news agents. Departure boards can also be found in the vicinity of this and our train, the 1355 to Penzance, is currently running on time and will be departing from platform 10. So let's head over there just now. As we head over to the platforms, we should probably take a moment to appreciate the spectacle of a canopy that they are located beneath. Temple Meads originally opened back in 1840 and was designed by celebrated architect Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Our train arrives from the Welsh capital Cardiff on time. The trip down to Penzance will be aboard one of GWR's HST castle sets. These are short form versions of the classic high speed trains, consisting of four Mark III coaches sandwiched between two rather thrashy class 43 diesel electric locomotives. The HSTs were originally built between 1975 and 1982 and have a top speed of 125 miles per hour or 201 kilometers an hour. Up until a few years ago, HSTs were the main workhorse on GWR's intercity routes in and out of London, but since the Class 800s and 802s entered service, they have been reassigned to more regional services in the West Country and South Wales. Now, as this is technically a regional service, no seat reservations are offered, so I'm free to sit wherever I like. The front coach looks quietest to me, so I think I'll head there. As someone who is used to travelling on the classic HST sets, I still find it slightly unusual that the castle sets only offer standard or second class seating. Nonetheless though, legroom is pretty good in my opinion. And the seats are rather comfortable too, thanks to good quality cushioning and being rather well shaped. Should you find yourself at an airline style seat, You'll have a relatively small but sturdy tray table at your disposal. And beneath the seat in front, you'll find a standard British plug socket. Coat hooks can be found on the side of the seat in front. And lastly, I must also give a quick mention to the metal branded plates and carpeted walls. This is very nice attention to detail in my opinion and adds a really nice touch of class. One last thing before we set off, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us heading southwest from Bristol and via the likes of Taunton, Exeter and Plymouth before eventually arriving into Penzance after covering a total distance of 208 miles or 335 kilometres. Scheduled travel time today is 4 hours and 45 minutes and our top speed will be 100 miles an hour or 161 kilometers an hour. The next station is Nailsea and Backwell. This is a Great Western Railway service to Penzance. And we depart Bristol bang on time. We soon find ourselves out of the city of Bristol and speeding west across the countryside towards Western Supermare and Taunton.
After calling at Nelsie and Backwell, Yatton and Whirl, we arrive at our first major calling point in the form of Western Supermare. Western is a rather picturesque and popular seaside resort. Much of the first portion of the trip is spent travelling at or close to our top speed today. While these old Mark III coaches can be a bit bouncy, I found that the ride quality was, on the whole at least, very good. About an hour after departing Bristol, we join the Reading to Taunton line. A few minutes later, we stop at Taunton itself. Now, as we run adjacent to the M5, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't point out that trains are indeed usually faster than cars. So yeah, enjoy your 70 mile an hour speed limits. Next up is Exeter St David's, which is the principal station serving Devon's county town. However, it's not the most centrally located station serving the city, with that title going to the aptly named Exeter Central. Soon after departing Exeter, we cross the River X. After crossing the river, we make a left turn and begin following its western bank. It's here that the scenery really starts to become impressive. After following the X to its mouth into the English Channel, we take a right and begin travelling along the famous Dawlish Seawall, which is arguably the highlight of the trip for me. As you can imagine, this stretch of railway is particularly vulnerable to erosion and stormy weather and indeed has even ended up collapsing into the sea on a number of occasions. However, work is underway to strengthen the seawall and hopefully prevent such events from happening in the future.
Next up is Newton Abbott, which is of course famous for its horse racing track, which has been in use since the year 1866. Before too long, we find ourselves alongside the River Plym as we approach Plymouth. With a population of over 260,000, Plymouth is the largest city in the county of Devon. Historically, Plymouth was an important port city during the Industrial Revolution, providing a crucial link to America and the New World. We'll be stopped here for around 15 minutes, affording us the opportunity to step off the train, to stretch the old legs and grab a breath of fresh air. As we depart Plymouth, we join the Cornish Main Line, which will take us right through to Penzance. Shortly after departing Plymouth, we cross the beautiful Royal Albert Bridge. This is another one of Brunel's works and opened in 1854 to carry the railway the 666.8 metres or 2,188 feet over the River Tamar from Devon and into Cornwall. Now I don't know about you but I've always thought that this little bit is very quaint and picturesque. <laughs> Immediately after crossing the bridge, we arrive at Saltash, which is our first calling point in the county of Cornwall. Next up for us today is Bodmin Parkway. The nearby town is notable for being the birthplace of William Hamley, who founded what is now the Hamley chain of toy stores. Given that we're now only about an hour from Penzance, I think it's time for a quick wonder. Now you'll be pleased to hear that there's plenty of space for storing luggage, both at the ends of the saloon and on overhead racks. Coach C has spaces for wheelchair users, as well as a large accessible toilet. Right. Speaking of toilets, you'll find one in each coach. And while I was pleased to find that they were rather clean, it was somewhat disappointing to be greeted by a depleted soap dispenser. Just a few more points, firstly you'll find bicycle spaces in the guard section of Coach A. While you are recommended to reserve these, it isn't mandatory and they can be used at no extra cost. Also, it's worth noting that despite it taking the train around 6 hours to travel from Cardiff to Penzance, 
No catering is provided on this service, at least at the time of recording. Personally, I find this to be rather disappointing. Lastly, this train is Wi-Fi enabled. It's not exactly the fastest out there by any stretch of the imagination, but at least I found the 4G signal throughout the journey to be rather good. We're now on the approach to Truro, which is signified by the site of the city's cathedral. The structure was completed in 1910 and is one of only three cathedrals in the UK to feature three spires. <laughs> A few moments later, we arrive at Truro Station, where you can change for maritime line services to Falmouth. Yeah. Eventually, we reach our final calling point of St Earth. Overall, this has been a lovely and scenic journey, and besides the scenery, I think that these trains have been refurbished very nicely indeed. To be honest, if you didn't know otherwise, you wouldn't think that you were on a 40 year old train. Another aspect where this journey got its spot on was the price. I paid £15.75 for an advanced single, including rail card discount of a third, booking about three weeks in advance. To me, that represents rather good value for money. So a really nice spring journey, but what did you make of the experience? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, welcome to the lovely town of Penzance, which is only located about eight miles from Land's End. We've arrived a few minutes late at about quarter to seven. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Monday.